All right, guys, how you doing? Today we're going to show you how to get started on your sandwich drawing. Um, now we already explored Autodesk SketchUp or Sketchbook a little bit, so you know where some things are. This is really going to put all that practice into work now, and you're going to get started really making your uh, digital design here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so the first thing we want to do, you know, is obviously you want to start a new image. If you didn't do that, click here. You can click new sketch uh, and I just, we'll just do the screen. And there we go. Um, this puck here is super important to have. It makes it very helpful. You can find it down in this little circle down here. You can see how I took that off and now I'm, I'm just going to put it back because I really enjoy using it. Um, now, the pen I'm going to start with to do my liner is this pen here. And I'm going to set this at 2.0. So if you grabbed in here, you can slide this up. You can slide it down. Um, I should say left and right. Up and down, you'll see it will change the opacity. Okay. So now we want to bring our image in. So you've already gotten your sandwich. Mr. Lin gave me this awesome idea to do a sandwich as a intro project for this dig digital drawings. And so I saved one from Burger King. Here we go. Now, before I get started, I want to just hit done. I want to zoom in on this thing. So I'm taking my two fingers. I'm going to make it a good size. You know, I got to work on this thing. I want to be able to see it. I think that looks good. Now I'm going to click done. Okay. So here we have our burger. I have my workspace set up. I'm going to take, click on this layer and I'm going to make the opacity about 50%. Okay. 49. Come on. It doesn't really matter. All right. And now I'm going to lock this layer so I don't accidentally draw on it. Okay. Now I want to add a new layer on top of this. Get rid of that. I just click into the empty space there. Now I want you to start working and thinking about this as being layers, like stacks, just like a sandwich. Just like if you were building this sandwich and making it, you would start with the bottom bun, then you'd put the patties on, then you'd put the cheese, then it looks like they put some you know, pickles or ketchup. Like think about actually constructing the sandwich. That's why I think this is such a great idea for a project because it's gonna really help you build those layers up. Uh, even the napkin in the back. So I'm gonna put that down first. Now. Let me get my, I'm using my stylus, so you might not see my mouse move around. But I want to show you a couple tools that can help you. Remember, I'm at 2.0 and I'm on black. Uh, you can use any color method you like. I just go there. I find that to be the easiest for me. And I use my eyedropper a lot. Uh, so here, this line here is pretty straight, right? So I'm going to try to draw it. And I drew that a little crooked on purpose, right? Now that looks okay. The great thing about online and or digital drawing is I can undo that line. This little S curve up here, this little predictive stroke, this thing is really nice. Now, what it does, basically, the higher the level, the more it's going to fix your stroke, right? So say I'm down here on a two and I want to draw a circle. You can see how it made a kind of an oval. But if I did that same circle on five, it's going to make it almost a perfect circle. I didn't connect it. All right. So think about this tool and when you want to use it. I'm going to go and try it on three and to get this bun looking pretty good. So I'm going to come down. Now, I don't like what that did. You see how it made it too round? That looks weird. So I'm not going to go with that one. The big thing is don't be lazy. You know, this is a great medium to try things out and play around with it. See if you like it. Again, I don't like that one either. Maybe I'll go down to one. That's pretty good. So I'll stick with that one. All right. So now I have the bun layer at the bottom bun. You can see over here, I'm on that layer. Now I'm going to add a new layer because I'm going to start working on the patties. So I'm just going to go ahead. And I'm just going to trace right through. I'm not going to worry about Drawn on top of the cheese, it's no big deal. All right, now I have my patties. I'm gonna move head, move on up to my cheese. Now 
I think I'm going to take this predictive line off. I'm not really feeling how it's making some of my lines look. The important thing is you want to make sure you connect all of your shapes, okay? So just go ahead through and really make sure you connect them, even though you may think you did because it touched the line of the layer underneath. If you go to, when we go to color these, it's just like a paint bucket tool. So once you pull that color in, it'll bleed out all over the whole background. So you want to make sure that you are closing all of your shapes. All right, so now moving on, I'm going to do the pickles and just really try to think about like, marks you can make so these don't all look the same. So I'm just going to add, exaggerate a little bit, put those little ridges on the pickles. All right, it's super important that you guys are adding a new layer every time. I'm going to do this catch up in here. That looks good. I'm going to move on, do the onions. Add a new layer. I'm gonna go ahead and do my tomatoes. And you can see I'm just drawing it as if the other stuff isn't there. I'm just actually drawing that wedge of tomato or slice rather. All right, I'm gonna go ahead up. Now the lettuce, it's, it's a little more interesting, right, to draw. So I'm, pick, I'm gonna look at the edge and try to follow those contour lines around so that I can get something that resembles lettuce. It's not too stiff. Um, and just remember to close your shape. So I'm gonna actually start here so I can kind of remember where I was. And just try to have fun with it. Try to follow it around. See what you can come up with now. Looks like I got a little lost there. So I'm going to hide this layer so I can see where I need to connect. I'm just adding some lines in here just so that it can kind of get a little more texture to it. All right, I can bring that back so I can move on to my next layer. I think that looks good. I'm going to add the special sauce up here or whatever, mayonnaise. All right, now I'm gonna go back to this top bun. Now I might get back to my predictive line tool so I can make this nice big oval. Kinda of wanna do that one again. I didn't really like the way that ended. Let's see here. All right, now I'm gonna shut that off and then finish that line. I'm hiding my lettuce. I'm going to make sure I get this thing connected. All right. So now I have mainly the whole thing done. I want to get that little uh, napkin down the bottom there. So let me just check my lettuce real quick. I feel like there's something missing in there. But... All right. should be all right. Okay. And now I want to go all the way down to the bottom. 
see if it all Let's see if I can move this layer up. All right, so now I'm going to make this little uh, napkin that it's sitting on. So I'm going to use that predictive line tool again. I think I'm going to get a nice straight line across. Now I want to make sure I connect these. Now it's not that, that the neatest thing in the world back there. I'm going to hide that real quick. And see that didn't connect like that's a problem. And so I want to make sure I go ahead and I'm going to shut this off so I can make sure I get them connected. Now remember everything's going to be hidden behind there. So even though it looks a little sloppy, nobody's ever going to see that once I start to fill this thing in. All right, so now we have a nice looking line drawing. And the next step is we're going to start coloring it in. All right. So this part, I've, I mean, it's, it's e the easiest coloring that you'll ever do because you, you don't have to worry about the lines or anything like that. All right. So let's go ahead. I'm going to work on this first layer. Now, what I like to do is duplicate each layer. That way I don't mess up these lines. Because if I fill this in with ink, it looks like I'm not connected over there too. Better take care of that real quick. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So I'm going to duplicate this so that I can have a line layer and then a color layer. All right, so you can see we have two of these little napkins, and I'm, I like the color on the one underneath. So now I'm going to go up here to my paint bucket. Okay, I'm going to click on the color palette and you want to make sure you get this eyedropper right now you want to grab the eyedropper and then drag it around until you can find that color that you like and i'm going to stick with that one and now i'm going to lock this layer it's going to only allow me to work on things i've worked on in there okay so now i can you can see that this is colored in i'm going to go ahead and move forward to the next layer, to the bun layer. Now it looks bad because it's kind of in the bun, but that's because it's just the line drawing on the on the lower bun. So I'm gonna click here. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna duplicate it. Again, I'm gonna work on the bottom line drawing and I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna click here, I'm, I'm gonna grab the eyedropper and I'm gonna to try to pick a good color from this bun. I think that one looks fine. All right, and then I'm gonna do the same thing, make sure I lock it. And now you can see that starting to stack and layer and hide the images behind it. And you're just going to go through this entire process and duplicate. Here we go. We're going to get the color picker again. We're going to go down and find a nice color for this. Now, I'm wondering if because the opacity is so light, that's why these colors are so pale. So it might be cool to check that out later um, to see. If we left, if we turn the opacity back up, would we get more accurate colors? But I kind of like the style that this one's given this little cartoons. And then I'm clicking inside the shapes. And here we go. Now, it's not as important to lock the layer for this step. But when you go in and start shading, then you definitely have to lock this layer. You'll see why when we get there. All right. So I'm going to go ahead up. I'm going to the cheese. I'm going to duplicate the layer. Okay, then I'm going to go here, I'm going to get the eyedropper, and you're just repeating the process here. Find a good color for that cheese. I kind of like, let me see that. This, not really over there. It's pretty yellow there. I like that. All right, now you can see how it's all covering up, and that's why I like to do the duplicated line and then the fill layer. And that's why we also work from bottom to top. All right, so next up we have what? The pickles. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to duplicate that layer. Again, I'm going to click the color, get the dropper, find the color I want for these pickles. Want to be a little more green. There we go. And now I'm going to color them all in. Oh, see, I'm on the wrong layer. See that? So I'm just going to hit Control Z. I'm going to get back down here because I want to color in this layer, not the line layer. 
Okay, now we're moving up. What's this? Maybe the ketchup. Duplicate. Get here, and then we're going to click. Eyedropper. Find a good color for that ketchup. Looks good. Make sure I'm on the right layer this time, and we're good to go. The great thing is if you mess up, you, all you have to do is hit Control Z. Duplicate. Again, I'm going to work on this layer. Okay, moving up here to the tomatoes. Again, duplicate the layer. Work on the one underneath. Click your eyedropper. Move this around. Find a good color that you like. I thought that one's pretty good right there. And then I'm going to fill this in. Now, these all look very flat right now, but you'll see once we get into the next lesson that we'll be able to really add a lot of dimension. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing. I almost forgot to make my copy. Go underneath. Let's get the dropper. I'm going to try to pick one of these lime green. I really like that color. Now, it's getting a little hard to see where I've done and where I haven't, so you can always hide other layers if you want. Let me see that in there and see if that's I think that looks good. The nice thing is we can always just go back and work on that layer if there's a problem. It's the super, super important that you guys are working on separate layers for all of this. All right, I duplicated it. Let's get my dropper again. Try to find some white. And I could have just picked any random white if I wanted to. And then I believe that is some of that. Okay. Now we're going up to the top bun. And here we go. Let's duplicate it. Click on this layer. Let's find a good color. Now I could just, I might just take the color from this bun. That way it's the same. And there we go. All right, now my sandwich looks a little weird, like a little fake at this point with that bun just sitting on top. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually move that layer down. So we're going to grab it and we're going to move it. Uh, come on, that's not working now. Here we go. Let's grab this. We're going to put it under the lettuce. So wait until that little hand comes up. See it? I'm clicking and holding there. Now the bun is behind it. Now see this line is still here. So that's because I left the line drawing part up there. I'm going to grab that and bring that down. It could be a little easier to do this, but there we go. I guess I can go right there. And now you can see it has the appropriate layers. Okay. And now this is a nice little digital drawing. I think it looks good. If you wanted to check it out and see how it looks without this in the background, we could hide this one. It looks like there's some holes there. Or we could fill in a color behind it, maybe put a, a layer. I could even go in on this layer here. And I could put just, I could grab a color if I wanted to and just put it back there. I don't know what color is going to look good. Let's see. Uh, Maybe I'll just grab one of these. And I'm back there, so. Oh, this layer's locked. See, so I can't color anywhere that I don't want to. That was way too little. And I'm just filling in some background space here. I'm not sure why that's coloring up there. All right, I don't like that at all. All right, so let's keep moving here. All right, so let me just show you how then, if you wanted to make this look more three-dimensional, all right? And then you can go around and play with this however much you want. So the big thing you wanna do is lock your layer. So I'll just show you what it looks like unlocked. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead in. I'm going to pick on this, get the eyedropper, grab the color of that. And now I'm working on this layer. And I have a nice size airbrush. That's this tool right here. And I'm going to try to, I want to make a darker version of this. So if I grab this color and slide down, I can change the luminance and I can get colors within that range. So then I'm going to take this and I'm going to start 
painting on there. But you see how that's all going wherever it wants? That's why we lock the layer. So let me undo that. I'm going to click lock. And now I can color freely, and it's only going to color in the area that I worked on right there. Right? So you see how I did that? And I'm kind of working here. I could take this and then make it a little darker too, get a little more 3D on there if I wanted. But we're just trying to add a little shading, a little depth. Now, obviously, you could spend a lot more time really fine tuning your elements and making them look the way you want. Um, I should put, I don't I should have made a separate layer so I could have practiced on that. All right, so let me undo all that just so I can. So I want to practice. I don't want to mess with this so I can duplicate this layer if I want and then I could practice do things if I don't like it I could just trash it or hide it um, when you're on the patties right so let's get this one so you can use different textures right so click on your brush and now let me get a color that we like so we'll get a color in this range here and we're going to turn it down so we get some darks but now that I'm in here I can scroll down and you see all these little textures like I think this one or some shapes, you could do anything you want to do. That's the fun part about it. But I'm going to grab this one, the charcoal. I could see that really becoming like a burger. Um, and I'm going to make it bigger. You see the little sample showing you what it's going to look like. And then I could play around and really, oh, no, what? I forgot to lock a layer. So no big deal. We just control Z, go lock it. And now when I color, I'm only coloring on that mark. Does that make sense? And then we're going to go ahead, I'm going to darken it up, maybe try to, maybe I'll shrink it down, maybe try to get some of those char grilled lines. You know, you just want to play around. All right, so you can see how this could work if I like kept going. I could spend an hour just working on these patties, really trying to make them look realistic. All right, the big important thing is make sure you're working on layers, make sure you're looking at what you're doing. And ask yourself questions throughout the process. All right. All right, guys, hopefully this is enough to get you started. And that's it. Let me know if you have any questions. All right. Thanks, guys.